Ladies and gentlemen, the Shred Gaming Zitacom video. We have some news of the GeForce GTX 750 Maxwell graphics card. Note I said 750 and not 750 Ti. Now I've done this as an article as well because there are some specifications that I'm going to be discussing and you can see a direct like for like comparison as well as leaked images from a retailer so you can actually see what the card looks like. For the price point, which is going to be around 100-ish US dollars, it's looking to be a really good card, as you will no doubt be aware of by the time I've finished this or read the article. So, it is, as you'd expect, Maxwell-based, and as you would expect, is a cut-down version of the 750 Ti. That means it features fewer CUDA cores, 768, um, to be precise, we're not sure quite yet of what the ROP situation is or what the TMU situation is. The likelihood, and my guess, is that we're going to be seeing 16 because I don't really think we're going to be seeing 8 ROPs on the card. And 32 is more than the 750Ti. So... The likelihood is we're going to be seeing 16. That's not confirmed. That's that's a guess on my part. TMUs have not been confirmed. I'm going to guess it's going to be fewer than 80, um, which is what is featured on the TI, the 750 TI. So what that number is, I am not sure at the moment. What we are going to be seeing is one gigabyte of GDDR5 memory. And that's going to be running on a 128-bit bus. So um, that's on 5 gigahertz effective. So, yeah, we're looking at about 80 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, which is going to pinch a little bit. It probably won't be as horrific as the TI. Um, because, well, let's face it, there's a lot more CUDA cores in the TI and more TMUs most likely so the bandwidth situation is going to be a bit more constrained there regardless the GPU is going to be clocked at 1020 verse and 1085 uh, standard versus boost respectively and of course you're going to see the usual stuff that you'd expect in terms of ports that would be DVI, HDMI and so on and so forth and of course it's going to support all of the the shiners such as DX11.2, CUDA, OpenGL and so forth. So I'm certainly not going to read out all of the comparative specifications between 650, uh, the 750 Ti, the 750 and the 650 Ti. I've done them as a uh, table on the website if you so wish to look but what I will tell you is that there is a significant change um, in this card compared to the 650. The big change is that we're going to be seeing a heck of a lot more power um, in the 750 versus the 650. Now while that's obvious, yes, but we're going to be seeing a lot and I, I do mean an absolute huge increase in the amount of CUDA cores. Basically the amount of CUDA cores in this is exactly the same amount as the 650 Ti. You're looking at 768 versus only 384 of the 650. This is an indication that Nvidia do not want AMD to just run a muck with the low end or the low to mid end graphics cards they do want to start hanging out there and um, want people to be their friends because obviously AMD are going to be releasing Mantle it's unknown right now how much of a difference that's going to make on say Battlefield 4 but for titles and there are going to be around 20 in the next 12 months or so that are going to support Mantle and let's assume that that gives you let's say an average of 20%. AMD have stated it's up to 45%, but let's let's say for a low end lower end card as an average, let's go with 20%. That's going to be quite a difference and, and Nvidia really want to start to push that. Obviously they do have things such as G-Sync, but let's face it, you know, G-Sync monitors are pretty expensive and to really make the most of them, you're going to need a better graphics card than a 750, a GTX 750. That's just kind of part and parcel of it. As for the launch date, 
well, unknown. It's most likely going to be at the same point as the 750 Ti, give or take a few days. So that's going to be mid-February. Um, so anyway, this card is not going to set the world alight. We are not going to be seeing 3D Mark Records set. But what it will do is, for those of us who are looking for a cheap budget card, maybe for secondary secondary PC, maybe like a backup card if you're, you know, maybe wanted to sell your big card, um, you know, do the normal shuffle where you have, say, a really high-end card, you sell it a couple of months before the new one comes out and so on. Or for those of us who are just looking to play on a budget, most likely this card will be able to handle uh, 1080p. Uh, quite happily, especially if you're willing to compromise on the settings a little bit, you know, you're not expecting to turn, turn on like four times MSAA or whatever. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.